Besides all the different events that you can listen for in NativeScript views, did you know that you can also create custom events? Custom events are coming up in this video. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Alex from nativescripting.com. Are you ready to take your NativeScript skills to the next level? Check out some of the advanced NativeScript video courses that we have available on nativescripting.com by multiple authors. There's a discount code down below in the description. And if you're new here and you want to learn more about NativeScript, make sure you subscribe to this channel to get the latest NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials all delivered to you. But make sure you click the little bell so you don't miss any of those. Custom events are the bread and butter of applications. Well, now that I think of it, maybe I need a better analogy. Anyway, custom events are important. If you're coming from a web background, then you've probably used something like jQuery. And if you use jQuery, you've used custom events. This is where you register a listener, give your event a meaningful name, and then at some later, later time in a component far, far away, you can trigger that event. And the original widget that was listening for the event will execute its handler that you've registered. Pretty simple, right? That's what I'll show you how to do today in NativeScript. Now I'm going to show you this in preparation for the next tutorial, which is all about creating an animated bottom sheet. And we're going to be building on top of the multiple frames tutorial that I posted earlier that shows you how to set up multiple frames in a NativeScript app. We're really getting deep into the weeds here, aren't we? So if you haven't seen that multiple frames tutorial, check that out. I put a link in the description below and also in the card up above. Go watch that first and then come back here and then don't miss the next video about the bottom sheet. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss it. All right, let's do this. I've cleared out our layout. This is based on a hello world template. And I just have a button here on my main page that does pretty much nothing right now. We have this on tap event that's registered, but nothing is handled here on main page. So I'm going to export a function called on tap. It's going to get some args and event data. All right. And here we can actually do something. We can do something on that button tap. So let's say our goal is to send a message to the page and do something with the page. For example, I don't know, animate it. So what you could do is create a variable out here outside of the scope of the functions and say, let page so if type page we will initialize that to null. And then when the page is navigated to that's this event right here, then we're going to store off that page into that variable right here. Next, when we tap on the button and this on tap event handler gets triggered, that's when we can reference that page and do something with it. For example, animate it. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly do a little animation here. Duration three seconds. Let's do a scale. X will be 0.5 and Y will be 0.5. When I do that, I can tap on this button and you can see that the page scales down to half the size. But this works because we have a reference to the page and we're on that same page in the code behind. However, there is a couple of caveats here. One is when you create a page like this, it stays in memory. Even if you navigate to another page, this page variable right here will now have a reference to that page that you created, even if you navigate to another page. So that'll take up the memory unless you clear it out specifically on page unloaded, for example. Another caveat is uh, if you had two custom components that you wanted to communicate with, so you wanted to send a message from one component to another, then you need to have references to everything up here as well, or to have a reference to the page so you can drill down into it and find those components, which is kind of a pain. Everything becomes tied together and it's hard to decouple things. So let's decouple things. I'm going to show you how to keep things modular. And also I'm going to show you in a little bit how to communicate through the root frame as well. That way, if you have multiple frames, by the way, see that video that I've created on using multiple frames, I'll link to it down below in the description and up on the top here in the card. So if you have multiple frames, you want to communicate from frame to frame, you would use this technique that I'm about to show you. Let's get rid of this variable that lives up here. And instead, we're going to have a constant page. A page is an observable. It's a view and views are observable. So it has an on function. And those of you that are coming from the jQuery world will recognize this. Here you can specify on and then event. And there's a bunch of events you can pick from. For example, if I scroll down here in the IntelliSense, you can see all the different navigation events, but you can also create your own custom event. So for example, I can provide a string here and say on page shrink. 
So when this event is detected, then I'm going to use this callback right here that I'm going to provide. And this also, by the way, takes args and event data as parameters. I'm going to call this one arg. So when that happens, when page shrink event is detected, then I want to say page animate. And then I'm just going to copy this object right here, this animation object. I'm just going to drag this in there. Okay, so I've defined the page shrink. You can also define this handler in another function, in a separate function. So now when the tap event happens, when the button is tapped, all you need to do is trigger that event now. So you can say args.object, which is, as we know, is a button. So I can even cast that as a button here. Let's save it as a button. And I always have a hard time auto importing buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and manually do that. At the top, I'm going to say import button from TNS core modules UI button. And now I can say button. We know that button lives on a page. It has to. So it's going to have a page property and that's going to refer to that page that we're on. So button.page notify. So this is the key right here. In jQuery, this would be trigger. But in native script, the function we're looking for is called notify. And we want to send an event here. So if I hover my mouse over notify, you'll see that it takes event data as a parameter. So I can create a separate event data of type event data. And event data has two things on it, an event name and an object. So event name is a string and we want it to be page shrink. So I'm going to copy and paste that in there. And then the object is actually optional, but the object is usually um, an observable and it's going to be the button that triggered that event. Of course, you can also create your own observable and send in whatever data you want. And then when we call notify, we just send in that EVT data, which is the event data. So now when I tap this button, we had the same result happen and that page shrinks down. But now we've completely decoupled that functionality. So in this case, this is kind of a trivial example because we're on the same page. But if we were on two different pages, then this wouldn't be so trivial. So let me show you an example of what we can do with the root frame. We can define events on the root frame. So right now app root.xml is our root of the page and it's the root frame. We can actually create another file here called app root.ts. So this would be the code behind for this. And let's say I have a loaded event on that frame on main frame loaded. And let's go ahead and export that function right here in the code behind. This will have some args and that's of event data type, of course, that gets auto imported. Since we're dealing with a frame here, I'm just going to import it from frame. And args dot object is actually our frame. So constant frame equals args dot object. And then on this frame right here, I can specify on my event, whatever that custom event you want to define, and then the handler for that. So same thing that we've seen already with a page, we're going to have an event data here and the handler defined. So in this case, let me go ahead and do a frame animation, frame animate, and let's do a duration of three seconds. And let's do a translate this time. X will not move, but Y will move down to 300. So this will slide that frame down. So here we go. We have this defined on the frame. And now when I click this button right here on tap, I'm going to go to the handler here. And instead of notifying the page of this event data, I'm going to create a new event data that's going to say my event. You know what, let's call this event frame move to be more specific of what we're trying to do here. And the event data that I'm going to create on tap is called frame move. But instead of notifying the page of that event, I want to notify the frame. So I'm going to save all here my app restarts. And when I tap this, you can see that that frame moves down and animates down. There is another way to do this without referring to the page at all. So I'm going to delete this line. And let me clean this up because we're no longer working with the page here. I'm just going to delete this whole navigating to event. And we're going to import star as frame module from TNS core modules UI frame. So this is the entire frame module. And if you've worked with navigation before in native script, then you know that the frame module actually has a topmost function, which gets the topmost frame. So the topmost has that navigate function right there. We're not using navigate, but we are using notify. So with notify, we can send in the EVT data that we've created. And 
there we go my app will restart i'm gonna hit tap and there we go my frame animates down again so in case you want to have your events hosted in the topmost frame that way you have some place to store all your events all your custom events and not get confused about what frame you're dealing with if you're dealing with multiple frames then you can always store them in topmost and reference that topmost frame through the frame module Keep an eye out for that animated bottom sheet tutorial that's coming up shortly here on this channel. So consider subscribing to get the native script tips, tricks, and tutorials that you want. And make sure you click the little bell button so you don't miss any of those. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. And you'll find me hanging out doing random tweets about native script. That's all for today, folks. I will see you next time. Bye.